that evaporate. Get rid of this solvent. So our biphenyl actually hasn't moved all the way up. That's good, assuming that's the biphenyl. And then we've got our, probably our alcohol here, the other isomer, the alcohol. Hopefully the ketone will be in here somewhere. This is even a better solvent system for running this column. I'll rewrite the lab manual for next year. Let that dry. Put this back in the fridge. This stuff doesn't behave very well if you don't keep it refrigerated. You can see that the ketone is still not separating very well. It is lower than the alcohol, but not much lower. So probably some of that bottom spot that we saw in those early fractions there was actually ketone, but definitely you can see a good separation of these more polar aldol condensation products, which we got rid of. I can turn that off. that cool. That one I will not put away until after it's cooled. So we've got our early fractions, our kind of middle cut, our later fractions, and then they have two co-spots. This one running the 595 and the one on the right running that 8020. A one to four mixture. It actually looked like it would have been a perfectly suitable solvent for checking our fractions as well. Right? There's those low spots which we saw here in fraction 14 and then more in fraction 18 and 23, which we didn't keep. But the ketone really isn't very different. It doesn't look like there's a lot of ketone in the 52A in my starting alcohol. I don't see that kind of slightly more purple but if there is ketone, it's not going to be well separated in that solvent mixture. So that's it for running the column, and uh, now we can move on to the dehydration.